The Toronto International Film Festival is heading into its final weekend. Strikes ongoing have really affected this year's festival in terms of the number of A-list stars uh, able to be on red carpets, but the city has just been a buzz all the same with moviegoers and film fans. Lots of memorable moments from the red carpets and in various theaters, uh, and that's for fans and creators. So on Sunday, so this coming weekend, we'll learn which film wins the People's Choice Award. And yes, over the years, that film has often been one we've heard in the award seasons to come, Oscars and what have you. So uh, we'll pay attention. Could it be a harbinger of what we'll see when we're talking to you, Eli, generally during, during the award season ahead? Eli's here. Jackson Weaver is back with us because we talked. If you missed last hour, we were chatting about favorite moments from the red carpets right. and various um, moments in the theaters. 213 films screened at this festival, and we've asked you to pick your top three. <laughs> That's a tough job. Go ahead, Eli, you start. Uh, I've covered a lot of ballet. Yes. I have interviewed dancers backstage. I have watched many b ballet performances. What Swan Song, a documentary by Chelsea McMullen, captures is remarkable. Now, on one level, this is about Karen Kane mm -hmm. directing her version of The Black Swan. And already you have so many layers there because Kane, who danced in it, and now as the head of the National Ballet of Canada. But what makes this so remarkable, one are the other characters. The veteran kind of prima ballerina who herself is kind of struggling with an injury and some challenges. A younger ballerina still kind of breaking into a scene with sort of a punk energy who is just in the ballet kind of core, but also has her own arc. So you have different dancers at different layers, but then also what is so amazing is how the director captures not just what it looks like, how it feels like. And I don't mean the grace, I don't mean always the beautiful parts, I mean the marathon, the hurt, the struggle, the battle, the chaos. Never seen uh, a dance documentary, anything like that. That is Swan Song. Now we're gonna go from art to horror. The Zone of Interest mm. is from Jonathan Glazer. Okay. This is a guy who gave us Sexy Beast. And it asks, how do you live a life in the shadow of one of the most horrifying atrocities ever. That is the main character. He is a Nazi commander. Him and his family have a beautiful home in Poland that shares a wall with Auschwitz, the oh. concentration camp. And much of the film focuses on just their banal domestic life, <clears throat> just having a day, the kids playing in the pool, going down the slide, but in the background are the chimneys oh, and the plumes from the crematorium. And sometimes at night as they're going to bed or talking, you hear gunshots hmm. or screams. So this, in a way, is theater of the mind. It is what is implied and how they are living with that and what they have done. It never shows you, it just, you have that feeling and very much the sound. And it is a haunting, I would say, masterpiece. I'm gonna finish with Sing Sing. You mentioned People's Choice. I hope it's a contender. I'm gonna go back to art. This is about the power of art. This is based on a true story in a documentary. That is Coleman Domingo. He plays Divine Eye. He is the founder of a group that is called RTA, Redemption Through the Arts. Prisoners in this prison, Sing Sing, mm -hmm. put on performances. And he's also in the movie Rustin. That's what you're seeing there. But I wanna talk about Sing Sing. And they use theater as a way to escape from their predicament and rediscover their humanity. Coleman Domingo is amazing. He's in multiple films at TIFF, but Clarence, <clears throat> Clarence Macklin, and there's a lot of actual ex-prisoners playing themselves in, in this, this film. And he is like this diamond in a rough. He plays Divine Eye uh, and he is just- Sing Sing. Sing Sing, amazing. Isn't that the one that you told me there was a, a sustained standing two, ovation? Two. two standing, just just yes. spontaneously, yeah. which you, does not happen very often at screenings. All right, those are your three. Yeah. You get your, you'll do time too. Oh How my goodness, I pick, the, I have not seen Sing Sing, but Swan Song, fantastic. I was actually a dancer for about 15 years, and yeah. this is one of the few movies that really showcases the art of dance. Okay. Love it, Zone of Interest, amazing. But my movies, first one, 
the very opposite, silly, silly comedy, Hitman, starring um, Glenn Powell, but also directed uh, by Richard Linklater, which I don't know if you'd expect. It's a very silly comedy about a guy who is a philosophy prof professor, and he moonlights as an undercover <laughs> cop, I guess, and he really? pretends to be and a And it's a comedy? It's a comedy, it's very silly, it's a dark comedy. He's pretending to be a hitman, he's trying to uh, arrest people who are trying to hire hitmen, and then he meets this one woman who's trying to assassinate her husband. You see her there, and he unfortunately falls in love, ends up trying to help her, amazing. Yeah. Moving right along, another okay. movie I loved, Ezra. This movie is uh, a very heartfelt movie about starring Bobby Cannavale as a father with um, his estranged wife, plays by Rose Byrne, who's real life in a relationship. They have a son, an 11 year old boy who struggles with autism, trying to figure out how to best help him, how to best serve him. Unfortunately, the decision that Bobby Cannavale's character makes is to uh, kidnap his son and take him across the country. Oh, um, I didn't see that coming. It's a little strange, it's but it's, a road it's surprisingly movie? heartfelt, surprisingly amazing, surprisingly affecting, and just wrapping it all up. The me most amazing movie I saw at this festival, The Holdovers. Yeah. I courted you the yeah. whole way to yeah. tell yeah. you about I, it. I buttonhole, I buttonhole <laughs> Jack says, how are you liking the festivals for it? He goes, oh, The Holdovers. Yeah. You oh. have to see, because we love Paul Giamatti. Oh. Paul Giamatti, we love him, love him. It's directed Legend. by Alexander Payne. Uh, he was at a, a screening today, or not today, rather, but this week, speaking about how this is a movie he's wanted to make for years. He didn't have the experience. It's set in a Eastern boarding school, East Coast boarding school. Um, some students have to stay over in the winter. He, Paul Giamatti's character is this curmudgeonly professor who has to take care of them. It's a story, it's a setting that Alexander Payne didn't think that he had the wherewithal, the, the knowledge to artfully do. He had to um, write this alongside somebody else. All I'll say is fantastic, so heartfelt. Yeah. Check it out. Perfect Christmas movie. Oh, yeah, very well, much so. We're really? going to be hearing about that. Oh, yeah. I think it'll probably have a fall winter release, and there it's set around the holidays. The holdovers, these are the kids that get stuck at the school because okay, their parents haven't picked them up. And so you have these two unlikely characters who come together. Giamatti, <sighs> the killer, killer line deliveries. See, I don't care about People's Choice Awards. I just want to hear <laughs> Eli and Jackson's choices, and thank you for bringing them to us. It sounds like you've had a good tiff, regardless of yep. the changes, and we've had a good one living it uh, vicariously through you both. Thank you very much, Eli and Pleasure. Jackson, here on CBC News Network this Friday.